The Lord is good. All the time. And His mercy is Happy resurrection. Happy victorious time. Happy new life. Happy transformation. Glory be to God for your life. And what God has started in your life, it will complete to His glory in Jesus' name. Yes, I want to tell you, God will bless you. Because the plan of God for you is not the plan not to bless you. So he will bring you and turn you in such a way that you will position yourself to receive the blessing. He said, I know the thought I think towards you of good and not of evil, but to do what bring you to an expected end. And that expected end is your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. Tell somebody welcome to your blessings. Welcome to your blessings. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the day of your victory. Welcome to the day of your victory. Welcome, you will see me have an encounter and enjoying the encounter with Jesus Christ. Welcome, you will see me having an encounter and enjoy the encounter with Jesus. You know, one thing is to have an encounter, another thing is to enjoy the encounter you are having. Because somebody can invite you to his house and you go to the house you will not enjoy. But somebody can also invite you and you go, you do what you enjoy yourself. So Jesus Christ is here today. He is here right now. And he wants you to enjoy the encounter that you will be having and you are having, you've been having with him. God will help you and you will enjoy it to the full in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to tell somebody, say, forget about your past. Forget about your past. Drop all those burdens. Drop all those burdens. Those things that are weighing you down. Those things that are weighing you down. Lay them at his feet. Lay them at his feet. Because he is able to take all of them to carry them. Because he's going to take all of them to carry them. There's a scroll. A golden scroll. And that golden scroll was handed over to somebody to open. But the person that was to open that scroll was afraid of opening that scroll. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible said one thing. God has not given us the spirit of fear. If anyone here, you have something God has laid in your heart to do for your life, for your future. A plan that you've been working towards, you've been working, you've been planning, but fear has been keeping you back from carrying out that thing. The time has come. Sometime we have our blessings standing right there before us. But fear will not allow us to take it. Why? Because you are afraid of failing. You'll be failing. And because you'll be trying and failing, you are thinking that you will not succeed in that thing. God is telling you, open that scroll and you will succeed in Jesus' name. Yeah. The time has come. Whatever it is, that's pro represent in your life. This is the time for you to go ahead. The Bible said that wherever you step your feet, you shall possess for your position. Amen. This land that you are seeing is a land that you have to possess for your position. So God who brought you here, brought you for a reason. He brought you to bless you and not to curse you. Forget about the crisis. Forget about every problem. Forget about your failure. Because when we think about the failure, there will not be today. And when there is no today, there will never be a future. Forget about those failures. Because those failures were there to prepare you so that you will learn something from the mistakes you made. So that you will not make the mistakes again. And not the right thing to do, the right buttons to press. And the right place to place your hope and faith. This is the time for you to move forward. And you will move forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For two days now we've been talking about something, an encounter with Jesus Christ. On Friday we talked about who Jesus is. We learned who Jesus is. Now yesterday we talked about those who can have an encounter with him. But today we are going to talk about what will happen to somebody when the person has an encounter with Jesus Christ. Because... What will give me the boldness to want to have an encounter is if I know what will happen when I have that encounter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you ask me to spend one month, you see what I said? One month waiting for Jesus Christ. The only thing that will make me to go spending one month waiting for him is if I know what will happen to me after waiting for him. That is it. 
So today we have to know what happened to those who we have or who have or have been having encounter with Jesus Christ. I've forgotten you. He said that even if your mother and father forget you, I will not forget you. He said that even a mother who is suckling a baby, if she can forget the child that she is married, I will not forget you because I have written you on the palms of my hand. Praise the Lord. And you will say how possible it is for a mother to forget the child that she bore. She carried nine months. It is possible because we can all witness this today that there are women that after conceiving they will go and abort. That, that shows that even when the child comes out by mistake, they will not appreciate the child. We are witnesses to this that today you have women that will suffer nine months carrying their baby and after delivering that baby they will throw that baby away. It's happening. Now, the Bible talked about it so many thousand years ago. Your mother can forget you. Your father can forget you. A woman that is having a baby, the baby is sitting right there on her palm, sitting right there on her thigh, and feeding from her. She can easily forget that baby and drop that baby. But God will not drop you in Jesus' name. He will never forget you in Jesus' name. So if somebody is there, please read. John 1, 12. Yeah. But for as many as received him. This is the first thing that happened to those that have encounter with Jesus Christ. He gave them power. Authority. To become sons of God. To become sons of God. Even unto them that believe. Even unto them that believe in his name. Read on. Which were born not of blood. Not of the will of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Amen. Another version talks about, puts it this way. He will give them the right to become sons of God. Sons and daughters of God. Now there is something I want you to understand. There is difference between right and privilege. A privilege is something that is given to you. You don't merit it. But you are just allowed to enjoy it. That's a privilege. But a right is what belongs to you. There is no qualification for that because it is your right. That is your right. Now, formerly there was one thing that was happening to the Israelites. That was the reason why they were not able to have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. Because the Bible tells us something about David. Then the Spirit of God will come upon him and he will begin to play. And the other prophets and the Spirit of God will come upon them. All of them, the Spirit of God will always come upon them. And the Spirit of God after coming upon them will go. And when next they will need the Spirit of God to come, the Spirit of God will come and do what? And still go. Why? Because they were only having the privilege to know God. They were having the privilege to be called children of God, not the right. And that was the reason why if you make a mistake, you die immediately. Now, a child of God went with King David. And as they were bringing the ark of the tabernacle, everybody were rejoicing. Even King David was dancing like a street boy. You remember what the wife said? If you, the wife said, How can you disgrace yourself, O king, dancing before even slave girls? Because David was just dancing and rejoicing that the ark of God was being brought in. Listen, all of them were dancing, and this young man was dancing and rejoicing. Now he thought the ark of God was about to fall. And what did he do? He tried to hurt God. He just stretched forth his hand to hold the ark of God, and God struck him dead. He had no rights. He was just living under a privilege. That was the reason why in the house of God, in the holy of holies, people were not allowed to enter. You were not allowed to go on your knee and pray to God directly because anything can happen. The sons of Aaron tried it. They went to sacrifice to God and fire consumed them. Saul tried it. Saul had no right to sacrifice. 
because the Spirit of God will come and go. He was living under a privilege. Then what happened to him? He went one day, I am the king. See somewhere, the prophet, the pastor is not coming forth. I will go and sacrifice. He went there and sacrificed and the Bible said, Obedient is better than sacrifice. The kingdom has been taken away from you. And that became the downfall of a man. God himself raised up. Did, he, did the Bible say he killed somebody? No. Did the Bible say he sinned? No. No, I'm just telling you something. They were living under privileges. But after the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, after the blood was shed, the Bible said he gave them the right, the power to become sons of God. Now, God is no more looking at you as somebody who was conceived by an agreement between your father and your mother or by, by the love affair between your father and your mother. God is no more looking at you like that. He is looking at you as somebody he himself conceived and brought out into the world where he brought Jesus. Because Jesus was with God from the beginning. Jesus was inside of God from the beginning. And when God decided to bring him out to manifest him to the world, God himself spoke his word and the Bible said, and the world became flesh. Now when God looks at you from this moment, God looks at you with that same eye that he looked at Jesus Christ as his own son, direct son, begotten son. That's what God does. So we are now living under right. And that is why, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. child of God, you can go on your knee and pray now. Because when our father Jesus died, that curtain that was dividing the presence of God, the Holy of Holies, got broken. The curtain parted away so that we can see the presence of God. Jesus did it for us. He gave us the right. This is what happened when you have an encounter with him. Everything, whatever it is that is standing between you and God, he immediately removes them. Every condemnation, because the devil will always be there to tell God these people have no right to belong to you. Because he was there when man was created, he saw when God was creating human being. And he saw what God did, that God gave us everything he made. God gave us everything because God said, Adam, enjoy all I have made. Including Satan was under the authority of Adam. You don't know it. Because everything that God made that is not right there in heaven, that have been thrown out of heaven, and that was made, that is found around here, belonged to man and must do what submits to man. That was the reason why the devil played. He was the first forewarner you can think about. The first froster. He played the first one on man. He told man, knowledge. Man, man wants to get sense, be quick. He said, Look, God, is, is there anything we God say me you know to do? If man say, Yeah, God say me we know it, that fruits of knowledge and life. But do you know what the devil said? The devil said, God knows, say, if you eat that fruit of knowledge, you will become so intelligent, so wise like him, and you'll be able to know everything. A man wanted to say, God, I want to know like you. The same thing he did in heaven was what he wanted man to do. Because in heaven, with all the glory God gave him, he wanted to overthrow God. So for man, he wanted man to not say, God, I reject your authority over my life. Because I want to become as wise as you are. I want to know what you know. And that was why man fell. A man ate the fruit. From that time, man began to hide from God. But it wasn't the plan of God for man to hide from him. But thank and glory be to Jesus Christ for bringing us back to where we belong. Tell somebody, I am back to where I belong. I am back to where I belong. Jesus is where I belong. Jesus is where I belong. Because the Bible said that through him we are all things made and nothing was made without him. And all things were made for him. He made.
make all things. When God said, let there be light, it was the word of God. Jesus was that manifesting power. Yes, it was the word of God. The time Jesus has been laboring for me and you was not just the period you saw him came to earth and we kicked him like football, we killed him and we abused him. It wasn't only that time. From the beginning, he was always there laboring for us. God spoke his word and his word manifested. Let there be light and there was light. Let there be this and there was that. And that was how everything we had created and all we have created for the benefit of man. God did not want us to come and begin to suffer the way we are. we are suffering today or we will suffering. Because before he made man, he made every other thing. That is why the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. Why will every other thing be added unto you? Because God has already prepared all those every other things. They are always there waiting for you. Yes. The only thing is for you to be able to know how to tap from him. Yes, the way is there. Nobody is stopping you from tapping. God cannot stop you from tapping from his blessing. Because he prepared it. The only thing is you have to know how to tap from it. That is just the secret. Every other thing will be added unto you. So he created everything before he created man. So that man will not lack anything. He never wanted you to lack. Most times we blame God. God is not the author of confusion. But thank God because he used Jesus Christ to reconcile us back to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now like we are saying, God will take away the written code. You see, there is one thing that affects man so much. You know that thing? The accusing finger of the enemy. Now that accusing finger of the enemy is not accusing you always falsely. Most times, the accusing finger accuses you rightly and lawfully. Because there is a law, and that law is that every soul that sinner shall do what? Shall die. So when the devil goes to God and accuses you of sin, he was right, he's right. Because we sinned, we disobeyed God, we fell short of his glory, God bless you, sir. We fell. So when he goes to God, he presents that case. He's a lawyer. If you think you are too intelligent, you can't be wiser. I will be frank with you. You can't be wiser than the devil. If you are educated, he's more educated than you. If you know too much, he knows more than you. And that is why the Bible said, he goes like a man and lion looking for those he will devour. Because he knows you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows. You cannot make grab grab. The only thing that makes us to boast is just because of Jesus Christ. Because we know that we have somebody we can call and he will intervene for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that written code was there. And is always there. The Bible said that Jesus Christ took that written code away. That written code that stands and stood accusing me and you every day. Reminding God of our sins, of our unworthiness that these people are like the prodigal sons. But the prodigal sons that have refused to think and to come back to you. God, these children have to pay the price for their sins. They, you, no, 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 no. You don't have to forgive them. You have to punish them. He will say, you remember what happened in heaven? When we wanted to overthrow you, you treat every everyone down and you never allow us to come back. This is something that has to happen to these people. But the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary took that written code and nailed it to the cross. There it will never come back in Jesus name. Why? Because the blood has been shed. God is the judge and he stood there judging and the man was brought to him and that man that was brought to him committed a crime and that man was me and you and when God judged he looked at the law book and he found us guilty but because he is a loving father he is a judge who cares he thought of how can I serve these people free but the law has already been set that somebody must die a soul that sinners must die and he is one that gave that law you know the bible says that the law of media and pressure 
when the victory is passed, when the ring of the king is turned, nobody can change it. That is high peace in heaven. When God decrees a thing, it shall be established. And that is why the Bible says that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto us. Even we, the Bible says, ye are gods. Know ye not that ye are gods. In heaven, when God decrees a thing, it starts and it stood. Because he is one that gave the law, the soul that sinner must die. So he looked at it. He said, but I want to set this man free. I want to set this woman free. But the law that I made myself with my own hand said that he must die. First one. The people you are going to die for will reject you. They will count you as worthless and nothing. I will go further. They will abuse you. They will spit on you. I will go further. And they will kill you. I will go further. Your prayer is, Father, let your will be done in my life. Pray that prayer. Say, Father, let your will be done in my life. Let not my own will be done. But your will, O oh Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, another thing that will happen is that when somebody has an encounter with Jesus Christ, something that necessary will happen is total changes. You will have complete change over your life when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Now, a prostitute, you know, when a woman is having five husbands, you know what it means. Praise the Lord. A prostitute is even better because this one is known as a prostitute. But her own is that she was playing it the big girl's way. She wasn't standing on the streets and she was having five different men. But Jesus Christ saw her because he came to save. Fetching water from the world. At the end of the day, this woman became what? Evangelist, praise the Lord. I want you to give clap up to the Lord. This woman stopped chasing men. She stopped being like a grave that is never satisfied with what, with what she consumes. She began to save souls for the kingdom of God. Her life changed immediately. She went to her people and said, come and see the Messiah. Can you do that from today and go out there and say, something good happened to me. I met Jesus. He changed my life. He can change your life too. How many of us are ready to be like this woman? She was condemned. She was rejected. She was counted as evil. She was such a person, apart from not being a Jew, a Samaritan, and a prostitute. Now the Bible says that your light will shine. When you come close to Jesus Christ, when you have an encounter with Him, every darkness will begin to do what? To go away. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is what? Is come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. See, darkness and thick darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness, just like the crisis you are seeing today, just like the problems you can have all around, they can cover the earth, they can cover everybody. But at the moment you've gotten yourself into having an encounter with Jesus Christ, the darkness will go. Because the Bible says that the light of God shines upon darkness. And darkness cannot do what? Comprehend it. Darkness will just go away immediately the light of God shines. That is why the Bible says, your light will shine. Praise the Lord. Now, the devil blinds the mind of people. The devil blinds the mind of the people who are not there. But the moment the light of God begins to shine upon your life, every blindness goes. Praise the Lord. So an encounter with Jesus Christ will bring the light of God shining upon your life. Now your problems will be solved. Now another thing, like I said before, is that your sins will be forgiven you. And every dry bone in your life will resurrect in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now another thing is that the glory of God will cover you. Now, you remember Moses, what happened to him when he went into the presence of God and was coming out. People saw his face. They saw the glory of God shining. They couldn't look at it. He has to cover his face because the glory of God was shining. But today, the glory of God is going to shine upon you in Jesus' name. The glory of God is going to shine upon your businesses in Jesus' name. The glory of God is going to shine upon your family in Jesus' name. The glory of God is going to shine upon you.
upon your destiny in Jesus. Because when the glory of God comes upon us with sweet wine, and all mankind will know that I am your Savior, the mighty one of Jacob. God will arise and manifest in your life from today in Jesus. I want you to be on your feet. As you begin to pray to God for the manifestation of his power and glory upon your life from today. Because the 